Howdy, it's Tubal Cain. Welcome back. Now, in the previous six videos, approximately, I took this South Bend 9 inch lathe apart. I cleaned everything up. I inspected it. I did some minor repairs, but not much I can do about the wear itself. But now I'm ready to reassemble a little bit at a time here. And this is going to be a much cleaner job than uh, was the other one. But when you put something back together, make sure there are no chips. There are no uh, dings or high spots. Wipe it with a clean cloth one final time. And then I'm going to put the uh, headstock on. I'll, I'll wipe the bottom of the headstock offhand and then lay it on uh, the ways here momentarily. But normally we use uh, whey oil. And I do have the genuine South Bend whey oil that I bought from Grizzly. And I can't find the original can or bottle that's around here someplace, but that's what I have in here. But I don't believe there's a need for uh, the whey oil for assembly, so I'm just using a, a 20 weight non-detergent, and that's just something I got at Napa. Non-detergent. Probably isn't that critical. And then one final wipe with the hands, and on it goes. And the tailstock, or I should say the headstock, sets on this V-way and this flat way. So let me put a little bit of oil on that and then rub it in. Something like that. I just wiped the headstock, the bottom of the headstock, one final time with a clean rag and wiped it. And I'm going to lay it gently in place. Like that. Now it slides, of course, I'm sliding it on the oil, and I have a location mark, you recall, that I put on there, but I'm not going to bolt it down yet, and remember it is held down with two clamps and these two bolts from underneath. And I may have to slide that off to get one started. Now the tailstock is right here. And I'm making a point here right now, and this is also clean. I still got a little few chips there, but it's clean right here. I'm going to have to clean that. I forgot that. But I'm going to lay that on the ways also. And I got to stop here for a minute because I got company. And before I was so rudely interrupted, just a little oil here and, and right here. And I've got the tailstock setting on also right now without the clamp on it. But the point I'm making here is that both the headstock and the tailstock ride on this V way and this flat way. Now there is not as much wear on this V way as there is on the outer ones because the carriage rides on them and there would have been much more movement and much more wear. So you can see that that's how the alignment is uh, arrived at and that's the way it's designed of course for that alignment so probably a lot of thought went into that over the years by the various manufacturers and that's what they arrived at. Now you're going to see that the Atlas lathe has flat ways and that is not as desirable as V ways and you're going to find that some lathes have uh, more than this has one, two, three V ways, some have four ways depending on the manufacturer and the size. I'm going to lay the saddle in place right now. This is just temporary because I'm trying to get some points across but again we've got you can see there the V's go on the outer V ways. This is the saddle, and of course, the, the entire thing is called the carriage. So there's a lot more wear on that, and I've talked about in the, in the other video where you can feel that, that ridge that should not be there. So you understand now the purpose of the different ways on here, I hope. So I'll take this back off. That's going to go together later on. The headstock is tightened down. The bolt on this end was... Tighten down with a 9 16 
wrench and I had to use a socket wrench on the other end and I located it on the little scribe mark that I talked about in an earlier video. Remember I had also taken a picture if I needed it and I, and I didn't of the distance right down here because I wanted to put this thing together exactly the way it was because there's some alignment here with the gears that we need to contend with later so that's uh, that is done. This is the tailstock quill and I never saw one on any lathe that wasn't a bit galled in here from drill bits spinning so I already took this to the bench vise put it in soft jaws and this is a number two Morse taper reamer held in a big old Cleveland tap wrench and I prefer a spiral fluted one. I put it in there and very carefully turned it clockwise just a little bit to clean it up clean up any high spots and you don't want to take off too much. What I'm showing you now should be done on a regular basis but I'm going to clean the the headstock spindle out and push a clean rag all the way through, let it drop out the other end. Like that. To make sure that's clean. And now I'm going to put the sleeve and the center in there. They've been wiped clean, lightly oiled. Similarly now on the tailstock end, that's been cleaned as you saw. Light oil on the center. And remember, I still have an issue here with this tailstock where I have to deal with this, but I haven't done anything about it. That's a good winter project for me. That's pretty cobbled up. You saw that in the other video. Everything's oiled. Now they appear, the centers appear to align perfectly, but I need to uh, indicate that in. But there's one other test I would like to run right now, if I may, and, and I don't know how valid it is, but let me run through that with you right now. What I've done now is I've got centers and the headstock and the tailstock, and this is my test bar. You've seen that in other videos. And here is a steret surface gauge with a steret back button type of indicator and you're just going to have to trust me on this because I'm not going to show you a close up of the dial but what I'm doing here is laying the surface gauge on the flat way here now granted it is nicked and damaged and I did stone that and got it as smooth as I can and what I'm doing here is bringing this on to the uh, test bar I hope you can see that and then I have zeroed out the indicator. Now I'm going to move it down to the other end close to the tailstock. Just move it right down here without changing any settings and making sure that I get this flat. And looking at that, there is ten thousandths difference. Ten thousandths difference, that means at least at that point where the tailstock is setting right now, uh, both the ways and the bottom of the tailstock is worn such that I'm getting a ten thousandths difference in the height between this point and this point on an accurate test bar. Now there's not a blame thing that can be done about that. I talked about that sooner uh, or sooner in the video. And I'm sure I'd get different readings in here where the wear is different at uh, different points. But the major problem here is the wear on the bottom of the tailstock. So I just wanted to show you that at this point. And um, I expected there to be wear, but I had no idea just how much there would be. But it is ten thousands. And I hope that you found that uh, somewhat interesting because I did. And the test that I just did here, I devised myself. How accurate it is, I don't know, because it depends on how uh, accurately I can position that on the flat way. Now I'm going to put the saddle on, like I did a minute ago, only this time for good. I've already wiped these several times. Spread the oil. Again, if you haven't seen the other videos, this is the model and serial of this nine inch lathe and 
lay the saddle right on there. And now it's ready to receive the apron. I hope you watched the video on the apron, but this was all apart and cleaned real well. And most of it can be lubricated from the front, and I will do that later. But for now, I'm going to take some of this uh, multi-purpose grease, and I'm going to grease the gears. And we've got, uh, remember, four gears on here. So I'll do that off camera, and then it's ready to go. And now I'm ready to mount the apron onto the saddle. And notice that I already put the uh, carriage lock on loosely. such that uh, we have some alignment here with and I have to make sure that the gears mesh now this could also be assembled if you want with the uh, lead screw in place, but uh, uh, the way I'm assembling it, the lead screw will go in later. Before I tighten these two screws, I'm going to put the gib on the back here. So that's been all cleaned up, and since that slides, we need oil on there. Actually, only one portion of it slides, and then I'll, I'll oil underneath the back of the bed underneath uh, where my fingers are if you can tell. Now, I'm not going to show that there's two bolts that hold that in place because that'll be uh, it's hard to show I'm going to do it off camera. These two slotted cap screws are kind of hard to tighten up and I did clean the slots out real well with, a, with needle files but I don't have quite the right size screwdriver so I'm going to use an impact driver and I do have a nice big bit in there and I'm not going to overdo it, I'm just going to give them a, a, a tap okay. and it turns freely Perhaps you remember me taking this apart last week. Sure, and oil everything. And if I remember, if I forget how something goes, I go and look at the, the video. And then we got, I'll draw that up with the nuts. We got, remember, two jam nuts that go on there. And last but not least, again, the two jam nuts being tightened one against the other. Nice to have that thin wrench. And then, before I put this on the machine, I'm going to put some of this Napa Premium Performance Gear Oil on the gears. Not a whole lot. I'm not going to squirt it on there. I'm going to put it in a little container and dab it on with my fingers or an acid brush and I won't show that but this if it's good enough for a transmission it's good enough for these gears and I think it'll stay on the gears a little better than just squirting it with 20 weight or 30 weight and now let's see if we can get the gearbox on remember I have to thread it through the and there's a key and it went in that easily thank goodness and I will of course tighten up these uh, real well using this larger screwdriver with a adjustable wrench on the square shank and I did have some oil between the two surfaces. Sorry I was a bit in your way on the other end with my red shirt on and uh, now we'll put that bearing on the end of the lead screw. I oiled that already too. 
You did see me struggle just a little bit with uh, getting the lead screw key aligned with the keyway in the worm. There we go. And again, two Philister head screws. I'll tighten those up with a wrench also. I've done just about enough for today. It's time to go to have supper. Nice pot roast, I'm thinking, and potatoes. Got to put the gear train on and the guards, the cross slide, the compound, and uh, just about there. And uh, thanks for watching this part. Tune in tomorrow as I complete this. And I know you're thinking, why didn't he paint this thing while he had it apart?